Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, members. I, uh, I've been sort of dreading the day that we were gonna debate this bill. Um, and it's in different form than I anticipated. So I have been thinking about it and wanna begin by recalling my own experience in the first time that I saw the first clip of a video of George Floyd uh, and the murder of George Floyd. And it was before the sun had risen and I was awake in the night and opened up my phone and saw the video and closed it. I confess, I closed it and I closed it quickly because it was so inhumane and so difficult to watch. And here we are today on the first day of the trial of Derek Chauvin. And we are debating this piece of legislation and George Floyd, Mr. George Floyd's sister uh, was in Minneapolis today. Um, she spoke and reminded us, she reminded the people that were there that her brother was a loving father and she called us to kindness. And that is a powerful statement. I don't imagine, not really, that we are debating this bill today on this day by accident and that that speaks to me, um, and it speaks to me uh, not in the words of Bridget Floyd and calling us to kindness, but instead uh, to the, the harshness that has penetrated our politics in a way that separates us from our humanity and from the people and what they're experiencing. And inside this chamber, it seems almost sterile in our discussion about this legislation that is so rooted in a painful experience that we all experienced in Minnesota, we're still experiencing in Minnesota. And as I reviewed the bill, it is the addition of, of that language, the redefinition of a disaster, that language to say a disaster is not the result of civil unrest, that definition is proof, I, I believe, of the mean-spiritedness of this piece of legislation. And it makes me think about the debate that we had earlier this session with Senator Weber's bill dealing with LGA, um, where we were talking about mutual aid and the values of Minnesotans and how we are at our best when we are looking out for one another and standing up for one another, and that we base our actions so often in those values. You know, after that debate, I got calls from people that I have met over the course of my tenure in politics, people who live down in Senate District 16 and Senate District 17, so far from the district I represent, who said thank you for sticking up for us Thank you for looking out for us. I heard from a person I've known for many, many years who lives in Senator Rosen's district, uh, who was touched by the words about Medelia, but also wanted to know, do you think it is possible that the continued debates that we're having about our geographic differences mean that a community like Medelia could get left behind next time? And I said, I am worried about that as well, because we have to stop using geographic politics to divide us and pit us against one another, and yet that's what we're doing, again, with this piece of legislation. You know, I had um, the great privilege of serving as a majority leader in the other body. It is a responsibility different from the representation of a district in that you do have uh, a statewide responsibility, and we all represent our districts, and each of those districts have something to offer that's beautiful for Minnesota, but when you are the majority leader, uh, you have a responsibility to everybody in this state. And I found after those years that it was really hard not to feel deeply connected to everybody, to people, to the regions, to everything that is happening in this state, much harder than to pit a region one against another. I'm not gonna stand on the floor and pick on Iron Rangers, nor am I gonna stand on the floor and talk down people who live in rural Minnesota. And I'm not gonna stand on the floor and disparage our neighbors in Minneapolis or St. Paul. And right now, they are hurting. And this bill, whether you intended it or not, and I suspect there's intention, um, this is hurting people right now. This is not, a bill that is going to satisfy an immediate problem. 
There's a negotiation underway. Maybe this is the Senate's way of taking its position public. Maybe that's what we're up to. Uh, but I don't see this legislation moving in a direction that is gonna really help Minnesota move forward through the course of these next months. When you are lucky enough to be elected as a majority leader, and it seems our majority leader, there he is, when you're lucky enough to be elected to represent all of us, Majority Leader Gazelka, then I think it is important to remember that all of us matter, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Benson, for what reason do you rise? I would ask that Senator Murphy direct her comments through the President. Just a reminder, address your comments to and through the President. Senator Murphy. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, you might consider that uh, my expression of peaceful, civil disorder today on this floor. People across the state expect us to represent all of their interests, whether it is the fierce fighters of the Iron Range, our neighbors who live all across rural Minnesota, the voices that make up Black Lives Matter, they all matter. And right now, we are debating a piece of legislation um, that rather than advances our shared causes together, uh, puts a finger in a wound in a way that is, from my perspective, pretty unforgivable. And I hope that you will join me and vote against this legislation.